Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will be diving into the powerhouse that is uh, AWS DynamoDB. Now, AWS DynamoDB is Amazon's fully managed NoSQL uh, database service we have. So in today's session, we will look at 10 um, top interview questions that you can expect as part of this uh, DynamoDB service. So whether you are preparing for an interview or you're just eager to know more about uh, DynamoDB service, then you're in the right place. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit the uh, subscribe button. So the first question we have is, again, it's a very basic question, which is, uh, what is DynamoDB? So whenever in AWS, uh, when we talk about your uh, NoSQL uh, database, DynamoDB is the service that we have. So Amazon DynamoDB, now that's a, fully managed uh, no SQL database service that you have. And this is a service provided by AWS. So when I say uh, it's a fully managed uh, database service, so we don't have to worry about uh, uh, provisioning any servers or uh, we don't have to worry about uh, the uh, infrastructure uh, required to set up your database. Everything is taken care by AWS. So it's a no SQL database service and uh, this service it is highly it is designed for high performance scalability and also ease of use which offers you seamless and automatic scaling of throughput uh, capacity so with this service when i say that you know it's it's a fully managed service we don't have to worry about the uh, capacity of the database so uh, aws provides you the scalability so you can scale up and scale down based on your uh, requirement uh, it is very easy to use and also gives you a very high performance when compared to the other uh, uh, no sql uh, database service so um, simply your amazon dynamo db is a no sql uh, database service that you have in aws and it's a fully managed uh, uh aws service moving on to the next question how does dynamo db ensure the high availability of your data and also the fault tolerance of your uh, data now for this your dynamo db makes use of uh, replicating your data across uh, multiple availability zones within a single region so let's say for example your uh, setting up your DynamoDB in North Virginia. Now in North Virginia, we have six availability zones. So by default, AWS will take care of replicating your data. So whatever the data that you will store uh, in the DynamoDB will automatically get replicated across all the availability zones. That way your DynamoDB achieves the high availability of your data and also the fault tolerance of your data. Uh, such that if there's any issue with let's say this availability zone we would still have the data in other availability zones from where we can um, access the data and also uh, the data is highly available so um, uh, the performance of your database uh, is also much uh, better so each write is synchronously replicated to ensure the durability so whatever the data we are going to write to this uh, DynamoDB tables it gets synchronized across the availability zones so that's where you know your data is always in in sync with um, with all the availability zones in that particular region and that is how your dynamo db provides you with high availability and fault tolerance of your data the next question we have is what are the key components uh, of your uh, dynamo db so when we talk about your dynamo db there are a few important components so we have the uh, tables so whenever we talk about your dynamo db if you want to get started with this the first thing we have to do is you have to create your uh, table so unlike your rds database where uh, we create a database and then inside the database we create your tables with your dynamo db we can straight away go ahead and start creating our table so we have the tables Within the tables, we'll have your items. Items are nothing but your data, the records. And then we have your attributes, which are nothing but your fields. So your data types, what kind of data you want to store, we can define that by making use of your attributes. And then you have the primary key. So like how in RDS, we have your primary key and foreign key. In DynamoDB also, we have the primary key, which helps us to uh, maintain unique sets of our data. So here, uh, whenever you're creating your uh, table, so let's say I'll create uh, uh demo and a primary key so this is what i was talking about um, and then we'll just go with the default uh, setting so we'll create this table 
And once you're done creating this table, uh, whenever you want to insert uh, uh, data into this, you have the option so uh, explore items and uh, you can create your items so items are nothing but your data so this is going to be my uh, primary key you can uh, give a value to this and you can start creating your um, items now if you want to add uh, uh, more items to this you can always do that so add new attributes so what type of data you want to add you want to add a number on the string so what kind of data you want to add you can define that so these are the different different components that we have for your DynamoDB so tables can be easily created and deleted so uh, tables is essentially what we end up working with your uh, DynamoDB and these tables we can easily create and delete them and then the items within a table can have uh, different attributes so you know within a DynamoDB table that we are creating you can have any type of attributes you want it could be a string it could be a numbers it could be your so whatever the options you see over here these are the different different attributes that we can create the next question we have is what is the difference between a primary key and a secondary index in DynamoDB so whenever we are uh, creating our table so we'll need to provide this uh, primary key and in, in addition to that we also have the secondary index uh, uh, key in your DynamoDB so primary key is basically what we use to uniquely identify the uh, items uh, in your table so it's a single attribute which helps us to uh, basically differentiate our items like for example let's say you have your uh, um, uh, employee record so you know the employee number will be the uh, primary key right so that's a unique identifier which can be used to identify the uh, data and it consists of your single attribute which is your uh, simple primary key or your compos composite or two attributes which is your composite uh, primary key so you can either have a single attribute or a composite attribute whereas your secondary index it allows for querying on these attributes other than the primary key so you can think of it as your foreign key all right so you can either query the data from your uh, primary key or your secondary uh, index key which is like your foreign key the next question we have is how does dynamodb handle the read and write capacity unit so your dynamodb makes use of this read and write so this is basically what we can use to define the capacity of your uh, table so this is basically you know uh, how much of read it can do how much of write it can do that capacity is basically what we define by making use of your read and write capacity units so dynamodb uses a provisioned uh, throughput model for read and write capacity so here you can see this is one of the model you have the provision uh, read capacity and uh, provision write capacity so by default we get uh, five uh, uh, read capacity units and five uh, write capacity units so your read and write capacity units uh, these are completely defined based on your workload so what is your expected workloads you have and dynamodb automatically scales to handle the specified uh, throughput so it's you know uh, it's okay even if you don't know uh, what is your workload so you can go with the minimal requirement like let's say the five uh, uh, read capacity and five write capacity and then at any point you want to uh, increase you can you want to scale up you can uh, go ahead and uh, do, do that as well so here you have the option of uh, uh, increasing the uh, capacity so your read capacity and your write capacity as well the next question we have is can you change the provisioned throughput settings of a DynamoDB table after it's uh, created. So this is what I was talking about. So yes, you can modify the uh, read capacity and the write capacity of your uh, provisioned uh, throughput. So basically you can uh, change the read capacity units and the write capacity units. However, you'll have to keep in mind that it takes time to apply these uh, changes and also it will also cost you additional money. So here you can go ahead and change this, whatever you want. So you can either go with the auto scaling or you can define the provisioned basically you can define how much you want or you can go with the auto scaling where you can define your minimum and the maximum capacity and then DynamoDB will automatically scale up and scale down based on the capacity that uh, you have defined. But the only uh, um, uh, challenge we have here is the time that will take to uh, apply these uh, changes the next question we have is what is the purpose of dynamo db streams 
Now, DynamoDB streams can be used when you want to capture the changes that are being done to your items, the data in your table, and allow for real-time processing of these changes. So basically, if you want to capture uh, real-time changes to your uh, data, so we can make use of your DynamoDB streams for uh, that. So this can be used for uh, various purposes such as triggering AWS Lambda functions or maintaining an updated search index. We can make use of your DynamoDB stream. So as and when your data is getting updated, uh, you want to uh, have that real-time processing of these uh, changes, especially let's say with your search engines, right? Wherein uh, uh, whenever there's a change in the data, you want that to be um, updated in real time. We can make use of your DynamoDB streams for that. The next question we have is how does DynamoDB handle the consistency and uh, durability of your uh, data? So DynamoDB, it provides us with strong consistency reads for read and write operations within a single region. So, you know, um, uh, earlier I mentioned that by default, your DynamoDB will automatically replicate your data across multiple availability zones. And that is how it provides us with high availability and durability of your uh, data. So by default, your DynamoDB provides us with strong consistency for any reads and uh, write capacity operations that you're doing within a single region. And this is achieved by synchronously replicating your data across multiple availability zones. So this is taken care by uh, DynamoDB. So whatever the data that you're writing to your tables, that will get replicated across multiple availability zones. And that is how we get this strong consistency for your read capacity, right? Uh, read operations and the write operations. The next question we have is, what is the difference between on-demand uh, capacity and provisioned capacity in DynamoDB? So you can uh, go with two options. One is your provisioned uh, capacity. Now under this, you specify the read capacity units and the write capacity units in advance. And this is mainly used for your predictable workload. So when you are uh, creating the uh, tables, so here, let's say, I'll go to tables and we'll create a new table. So here you will be defining, you have the option of customizing this. So you can uh, define how much of uh, read capacity you want, how much of write capacity you want. So this is when you have a predictable workload, you can go with a provisioned uh, capacity. The other option you have is your on demand, which allows you to pay per uh, request. And this is suitable for your unpredictable workload. So if you're not sure about the workload, uh, that's where you can go with your on-demand capacity. And under this, you will be paying based on your uh, usage. All right, so whatever the capacity you're going to utilize, you'll have to pay the money for that. So you have two types. The next question we have is, how can you optimize your queries in uh, DynamoDB? So there are, a few options that we can use to optimize our uh, queries in the DynamoDB. So one is we can uh, consider designing the tables based on access patterns. Uh, we can make use of appropriate indexes. And also we can leverage features like projection expressions to retrieve only the necessary attributes. So instead of retrieving all the attributes, only the necessary attributes will be retrieved. So these are some of the options that we can use to optimize our queries in your um, uh, DynamoDB. So there you have it. Um, that's about your uh, uh, top 10 interview questions that you can expect as part of your DynamoDB. That's your quick tour through um, uh, some of the common AWS DynamoDB uh, interview questions. Now, remember, mastering your DynamoDB is not just about your um, interviews. It's also about um, understanding the power of uh, scalable and performant database, which is your uh, DynamoDB. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more uh, AWS insights. And uh, don't forget to hit that uh, bell to stay in the loop. If you, um, if you would like me to uh, explore any specific topics, don't forget to drop your suggestions in the comments. Until next time, happy learning.